how do you reintroduce this complex into the community? If it weren't there, if the buildings were not there, then the memory is erased with it. And this is the memory of generations of residents that worked here and of patients too. Located on the east campus of the St. Elizabeth's Hospital, the continuous treatment complex was built between 1933 and 1943. Composed of seven interconnected buildings, its panopticon design mimicked common prison layouts, segregating patients from the outside world. It was in stark contrast to the original light-filled hospital on the west campus, built a century before to care for the mentally ill. The East Campus really reflects this evolution of treatment for mentally ill, but they also were very scientific about it. They, they approached um, the treatment of many, mentally ill in a very scientific manner. And so it's, it's really quite interesting that all those buildings sort of reflect that evolution of treatment. In 1987, the ownership of the East Campus was transferred to the District of Columbia. The continuous treatment complex was abandoned in 2010 after the construction of a new hospital. As part of a master plan, the District of Columbia government reimagined the East Campus as a thriving mixed-use development. The CTC buildings would become a 252-unit residential apartment complex, 80% which are affordable. We knew that it was very important that from a community standpoint that, they, that the buildings needed to feel open, that they needed to have, that the residents were feeling like they had a sense of place and a home. And the first thing we needed to do was sort of break down the architecture that created this fortress-like and secure um, aspect to it and start to think about how we can create these entry portals and additions that were contributing to the to the historic architecture, but also created a sense of identity and location and address for the residents that were gonna be um, in the building. The newly fully glazed entry pavilions were installed to open up the once restrictive entrances. The corridors that connected the dormitories to the central cafeteria were opened and repurposed to become light-filled breezeways. Two of the corridors were adopted for residential amenities, including a fitness room, mail rooms, co-working spaces, and lounges. The product includes nearly four times more common areas than conventional multifamily projects. Its brick masonry was in very, very good shape. These were very solidly, skillfully built buildings, clay tile roofs. Um, you know, they could withstand decades of disuse and still be restored and still be used again today. Throughout the complex, 5,000 plus steel single pane windows were restored with an added storm windows to meet energy efficiency requirements. When you look at the building today and you see that how well we've, I think, kept the spirit of the architecture and sort of this idea of natural daylight, I think it's still there, but it just has a different use now than essentially being, a, you know, sort of a secured facility for the patients who are at St. E's. Original brick walls were left exposed in select locations to minimize new interior finishes and recall the building's historic past. And one of the historic sleeping porches was restored to use as a community porch. Feedback we've gotten from the residents has been tremendous. And the use of the amenity spaces, um, the, the gym, computer lab, conference rooms, things like that, all have been very high. There's a very strong sense of community there. The completion of the residencies at St. Elizabeth's East establishes a new nexus for the Southeast community. The project helps preserve the historic character of a once infamous landmark, redefining it for a brighter future. <laughs>